For those who are new to this channel, my name is Ben Davidson, and after years of training and experience in due diligence and expert research, I decided it might be more fun to investigate things that interested me. That's what we do here. This channel posts daily updates on the Earth and the Sun. It is 100% viewer funded and requires you to put your thinking cap on and clear out your ears if you want to keep up with the other 200,000 or so observers. You are looking at extreme weather events and climate events. Unless you have been living under a rock, you know that the most common theme in this arena is that humans are causing global warming. This video stipulates that the climate is changing. There has been a warming trend since 1880. That humans are an input on the climate system and will have an effect on it. And that pollution is one of the worst things humans do to this planet. We need major improvements there. Now let's look at where we need to refocus and make adjustments to how we understand climate change. Problem number one. The climate is changing unexpectedly. We are having heat and drought and floods and killer tropical storms. But years after forecasters assured us of runaway warming and the end of snow and ice, we are seeing a very different picture. The great global warming pause. We're now approaching two decades of failed warming predictions in terms of temperature. Combining NASA, NOAA, and the European data here, we can see the warming plateau, with the outlier spikes being El Niños and La Niñas. Depending on where you look, the planet has arguably been cooling for over a decade. It seems odd amidst the mainstream media claims, doesn't it? All you hear about is heat. Well, you can see for yourselves. Some longer-term NASA data diverging from the warming predictions. That's the green line. It is what it is. There have been zero correct climate models. And we're not looking for perfection here. Just getting close would do. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. For example, the Arctic sea ice is still well below average, but it spent most of 2013 and 2014 well above the record lows. Meanwhile, Antarctica has been setting records for high ice extents constantly for two years now. Month after month, the records keep falling. On the news, you may have heard that the western Antarctic ice sheet is melting quickly. It is isolated, melting underneath, and due to a massive active volcano system directly under the melt. That part wasn't on the news. And, despite all of that, the south is still shattering its high ice marks. If snow is supposed to be gone, someone forgot to tell New England, which joined other areas in seeing record-breaking snowfall this year. But imagine this. Imagine if all the snow New England got in January and February combined came down in one day. That just happened in Italy. These snow events have also hit the Middle East, China, and parts of South America over the last year. And it's not just the snow, it's the cold. Cold records are falling more and more. In 2013 and 2014, there were as many or more cold records set than heat records. Cold records were broken down to the Gulf Coast this year, with multiple locations in the United States actually recording 2014 as the coldest year on record. Despite the deaths, traffic accidents, commerce interruption, and more from winter storms, the entire $20 billion of U.S. funding for climate change is based off the story that has been one-sided, wrong, and non-inclusive. In the $3 billion for research grants, you want to guess how much attention cold and snow events garner? Calling it negligible is me being generous. This brings us to problem number two. You cannot trust what you hear. And not just because we're going on two decades of erroneous climate models, but because there are some legitimately sketchy things taking place. This story was picked up across the internet, but never once made it to TV. NASA and NOAA making adjustments to their raw data to show vastly increased warming trends. Funny thing is that one commenter suggested that sites of the thermometers had changed and that they needed to change the data but it's well documented that the urban heat island effect has actually skewed the temperatures higher already. Now this set off a firestorm, again, on the internet only. When they looked into Australia's data, they found the exact same thing. Temperature data has been altered from the original readings to show more warming. 
This one actually did make headlines in Australia. An unexpected gem, but also a stark reminder of how mum even conservatively biased media outlets have been on the scandal in the Western world. They checked South America's data too. Yep, same thing. Data being changed again and again. These aren't crackpot conspiracy theorists on some underground website. We're talking about widely read blogs citing government websites written by respected individuals, large publications like The Telegraph. What's most interesting is that the changing of temperature data would technically qualify as Climate Gate number three. You might not remember Climate Gate, the first one, but when emails were leaked, it was shown that key personnel in the climate world were attempting to alter the data and modeling characteristics so that they could show a warming trend tied to human activity when neither appeared true from the actual results. It made news for about one day, and then it was forgotten. When this happened, I myself was still clinging to my propaganda and taglines about global warming. Then it happened again. More emails demonstrating the corruption in climate science. The Earth didn't cooperate either stopped warming, and it became difficult to hold on to one's ego in the face of the truth. And then this makes climate gate number three. Governments and climate scientists all over the world caught red-handed in the information age, where just because you change something doesn't mean the original can't be found. Whoever invented that wayback machine gets a gold star today. It's about more than mistakes. Integrity is now in doubt. This has been cast by Richard Toll, former lead author of the IPCC, number one climate group on Earth, and by some at Harvard, concerning the influence of politicians and policymakers over the results of the scientists, even going so far as to change or suggest new wording so it fits their political platforms. Then again, even some in their own camp are beginning to question how the IPCC does things. There are in fact thousands of scientists who disagree with the science of global warming, Many are extremely reputable, but not all of them can be trusted either. Some of the scientists capitalizing on the unexpected aspects of climate change are simply bought and paid for by energy interests that will be hurt by protectionist climate policies. While the data tampering is one-sided, the money talks on both sides. In the sources found below this video, you can find an excellent macro-level breakdown of who is giving money and where it is going in terms of anti-global warming. When you see how much money is going from oil, coal, and others to these anti-global warming advocates, you have no choice but to question the integrity of their reports as well. Now, Beyond data tampering and economic influences, it gets worse. There are a good deal of dissenting scientists you can trust, those without big oil money behind them. European meteorology giant Lennart Benson was met with attacks and even threats when he questioned the certainty of warming projections in spite of abject failure. Dr. John Christie is one of the best climate scientists on Earth. Yet when he decided to try to improve the flawed models, he was seen as a heretic, scorned by even his friends. John Coleman founded the Weather Channel, was the first weatherman on Good Morning America, and is a winner of Meteorologist of the Year Award. None make him immune to adult bullying over climate commentary. And the list goes on, with professors from Ivy League schools, government agencies, and other esteemed names from around the world. The behavior is purely childish. Money, data fraud, bullying, and censorship. There have been multiple reports in the last few years of scientists having their studies covered up. They were simply trying to improve these models that have failed us so badly for nearly two decades, and yet, when they cut against the mainstream propaganda, they are beaten down like rats. Oh yes, we certainly have difficulty trusting what we hear. Problem number three is that the future is uncertain. Despite all the money and time we've thrown at this issue, we still can't seem to get models right or even agree on where we are going. Some scientists have been discussing a coming cooling trend for years. Others are just jumping on the bandwagon now. Most people don't know just how much our climate has fluctuated since the last glacial period, or about the periodicity of those cycles. On a related point, Many longer-term analyses show CO2 actually trailing temperature in the trends, not the other way around. The current interglacial warm period is actually the longest one in half a million years, 
and we are more than overdue for a cool down. British professor Hubert Lamb says that a new ice age is creeping over the northern hemisphere. Uncertain future, indeed. Perhaps the single most important problem in climate change is that the entire solar system is changing fast. And trust me, our pollution isn't making its way out there. Let's run through what's happened during the time of global warming. Venus's fastest winds have increased at least 33%, which dwarfs anything seen here on Earth. Imagine tornadoes that could reach 400 miles per hour, or if Category 6 hurricanes were happening on Earth. Venus is also changing its rotation speed, spinning slower now. Despite being reported by National Geographic, this story made almost no waves in the climate change discourse. Mars warmed faster during the time Earth was warming. You want to talk weather changes. How about the disappearance of something we've seen for centuries? Let's go ahead and make that a double, given that Red Jr. is growing and the Great Red Spot has begun to fade. Jupiter is also emitting strange radio frequencies. This is important. Saturn has a superstorm every 30 years at its perihelion. Its orbital time frame around the Sun is 30 years. Like clockwork, it comes and goes, but it just arrived 10 years early for the first time and was bigger than expected and lasted longer than expected. This would have been like that Category 6 hurricane hitting Florida on January 1st and lasting a whole month. Haven't seen anything close to that on Earth. Last but not least is Uranus. We actually hesitated on this one the last two years because its changes weren't exactly the type of climate change we were looking for, enhanced auroral activity. But then we learned of anomalous storm activity, which has been confirmed twice. The storms on Uranus are changing, and we just witnessed the brightest storm ever. Never seen anything like it. So we've got people we can't trust, models and temperature predictions we can't trust, a climate that is definitively changing, and indications that it is occurring throughout the solar system. Well, no solar system object is changing more than our star, and the sun may dictate our future. Since the need for better models arose, the investigation has been enormous. Scientists have discovered the flaws in the models, ones involving an underappreciated solar influence. They looked further into the past than the current models did and found amazingly accurate long-term matching of solar activity and temperature, even despite the inability to track the two over shorter time periods. Using the 11-year solar cycle doesn't work. The sun's effects are delayed and cumulative, and surprise, using more data over longer amounts of time revealed what was hidden. NASA has discussed the climate connection between Earth and Sun, Studies have tied solar activity to phenomena in normal meteorological activity and activity in the lower atmosphere. We have solved a decades-old problem of lightning production by looking at solar wind and cosmic rays, the energizers of our atmosphere. The space-to-earth flow of energy and sprites really should have given that away years ago. The sun strongly affects the upper atmosphere, centers of atmospheric circulation, the lower troposphere, ozone extent, and interaction with quasi-biennial oscillations. The solar cycle affects winter surface temperatures, occurrences of El Nino and La Nina, how the atmosphere and ocean interact, and on the activity of tropical storms. The ionosphere is highly affected by the sun, and it too interacts strongly with the atmosphere. The magnetic field of Earth is affected most by the Sun, and study after study shows the connection with climate change. And it has even been suggested that the field fluctuations alone should be weighed just as much as carbon emissions, if not more. Here at The Observers, we are almost finished publishing a paper on solar influence over earthquake activity. We're certainly not the first. And there have even been studies that show how the Sun modulates the slight changes in Earth's rotation and orbital distance that we detect here on our planet. So yeah, maybe the Sun affects the climate more than they originally thought as well. Given what has happened in the last two years, maybe it explains the poor performance of climate models. And indeed, I mean the last two years. Every paper you just saw about how the Sun forces the climate, a tiny fraction of the total of the past two years, 
was published no earlier than 2013. I restricted that focus so you could see how much work has been done recently, but also because you have a link below to over a hundred more papers from 2012 or earlier. All of those ignored by the IPCC and the one-sided climate propagandists. We can only hope the sun is not ignored in their next iteration. A 400-year grand solar cycle. Grand maximum gave us global warming, while the grand minimum on the left was the nightcap to the Little Ice Age. Now in truth, the Little Ice Age began a bit before that, but then again, the sun wasn't doing much better last round. Those three blue spikes on the right are the Little Ice Age. In fact, this current period of global warming witnessed the strongest solar activity in 6,000 years. Oh, wait, there is another half to this chart. Let's go ahead and make that 11,000 years. Those red spikes up at the top on the left are exactly at the end of the last glacial period. One hopes you can see the long-term pattern here through the short-term chaos. Extremely high solar activity brings us out of a glacial period. The weakest solar activity gave us the mini ice age, and then a strong finish and global warming. Now here's the most important part. Something happened around the same time the Earth stopped warming, the global warming pause. The sun began to shut down. Sunspots, solar wind, solar flares, CMEs, particle events, radio flux, solar circulation, geomagnetic activity, all falling like a rock. Some commenters have said the full grand minimum phase could begin this year. I happen to think we need to wait a few more. If it happens anytime soon, as every indication suggests it will, Earth may be due for a major cooldown and perhaps another little ice age. Remember, we're long overdue. The man who predicted the current solar cycle most accurately has also mapped these solar hibernation phases to occurring approximately every 400 years. We are 400 years since the last one. The final problem throws everything into disarray. Humans are messing with the weather. This is referred to in most circumstances as either weather modification or geoengineering, and for the most part, it is illegal. This topic is wrought with bad information online and a lot of conspiracy theories, but the topic itself is vital to understanding the climate. Due to the disarray of the discourse and the nasty comment barrage welcomed by any who decides to discuss it, I usually only discuss geoengineering on our website. That page has been updated recently, by the way. This short segment will be the exception to my website-only rule for this topic. The history of weather modification is long. Some patents describe using airplanes to spray the clouds and affect precipitation long before its use was revealed during the Vietnam War. Since then, hundreds of patents have been granted. One operation in the 1960s called Operation Storm Fury sought to reduce hurricane strength, but the results were questioned when better monitoring technology revealed that they merely were seeing normal hurricane behavior. In 1997, Secretary of Defense William Cohen mentioned ongoing efforts abroad to control the weather, and worse. By this time, it was already well acknowledged that cloud seeding was being widely used and that other options were being developed. Got a farm? Why not pay to have it rain more on your crops? Are you rich? Maybe go ahead and dump iron into the ocean to try to increase plankton blooms and eat up CO2, like was done by a man off the Canadian coastline a few years ago. The CIA recently expressed concern over what other countries are capable of, and we're not talking about iron dumping or cloud seeding. Ionospheric heaters have become one of the primary targets of monitoring groups and individuals. They can tap into space plasma, affect the ionosphere, and potentially affect the weather. Conspiracy theorists suggest they can do much, much more, and perhaps they can do more. But there are also recorded failures of the technology anytime an aurora is present so they are not yet the gods of this planet. The energy technology has not been a secret for a long time. You can read all about it on either official sites or on conspiracy sites. It'll be up to you to decide the truth. The use of different types of spraying in the sky is also discussed, sometimes called chemtrails. This topic is a bit of a screwball. The officials are now discussing implementation tests and morality, while the internet appears to show evidence that they have already begun to use these aerosols. To be perfectly honest, that argument is about to be preempted. Whether it is ongoing now or not, the plan to publicly acknowledge the use 
is coming soon. There are classes you can take at university on the topic, papers written on it, implementation governance bodies enacted. For more on my take, you can check out our website, but for the record, I'll just say I do believe that multiple schemes are being tested, if not already in full swing, and this presents the sixth great problem of climate change. So how did it come to this? How did the minds we trust get it so wrong and then devolve into children playing favorites and bullying each other? An amazing article on how science got so messed up can be found in the citation list as well. A top recommendation. So let's remember the stipulations. The climate is changing. Pollution is a major problem for our planet. But the temperature of Earth isn't doing what we thought it would do. Cold and snow records are here as strongly as ever. The people giving us the information are probably not to be trusted on either side, and we're long overdue for cooling. The sun might just set it off as it appears to be affecting the entire solar system now as well. Add in some human interference and make it part of the public discourse, and I guess our understanding of this topic is about to change in a big way.